Well, we begin the second half of the year 2023. Hard to believe. And hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Lincoln. Welcome to Oklahoma Sports Scene. Of course, on Cox Yearview Channel 3 statewide in Oklahoma. Also in Arkansas and Fort Smith. And of course, on uh, YouTube worldwide. So glad you're with us. Let's take a look at our show lineup. Turn the lineup in for you right now. NCAA softball and baseball. OIU playing at Oklahoma State in the opening round of the uh, NCAA regionals. While OU and OSU softball teams are in the World Series in Oklahoma City. A lot to talk about. We'll hear from the coaches as well. TPS Athletics Hall of Fame and Legends Foundation. Big events coming up the first week of June for Tulsa Public Schools. Gil Cloud and Kathy Barkley will be, both be here to talk about those events. Rick Ingalls, he's one of the inductees in the Tulsa Public Schools Athletics Hall of Fame next week. Former TU punter, we go back a long ways together. I think you like some of Rick Ingalls' stories. He's an incredible punter at the University of Tulsa. And Boomer, that's right. OU Heisman Trophy winner Billy Sims will be here with a little special event to kind of recap some of his great moments in sports. Billy Sims, straight hit on uh, Oklahoma sports scene. Let's take a look now at our Tulsa World Hot Topics. We have some hot teams, including the Tulsa Drillers. That baseball team is scorching right now. They've just finished a six-game homestand sweep of Northwest Arkansas. They now have won eight of their last nine games. They're in the Wichita this week for a series up there with a two-game lead in the North Division of the Texas League. They're 15 games over 500 so far this season. The record 30 and 15. Great job by the Tulsa Drillers. And FC Tulsa Soccer went on the road last week and won its first match since March the 25th. A come from behind 2 to 1 win over an outstanding opponent, the reigning East Champions in soccer, Louisville City FC. Tulsa captain Eric Bird put a header in the net in the 77th minute to tie the score at 1-1. The game winner, though, didn't come till almost the end of the match, the 89th minute, by FC Tulsa's newest acquisition, Philip Godrum. The three-point jump Tulsa to seventh in the USL Championship East standings. The club now heads on, keeps on the road. They have matches at Monterey Bay FC and Loudoun FC, where they come back home uh, June the 17th at One Oak Field. Well, once again, our Tulsa Oilers football team was so close, just falling short Saturday night in the BOK Center to the Massachusetts Pirates, losing 52 to 40, wild scoring, wide open game, very entertaining for the fans, big crowd on hand, they all enjoyed it. Trailing 32-27 at the half, uh, the Oilers battled back to a 40-40 tie, entering the final quarter, but despite two touchdown receptions by uh, Alexis Rosario, Tulsa never could get that lead. Oilers now head west to San Diego. They'll face the strike force on Sunday, June 4th. Kickoff set for early 5.05 our time. And then Tulsa's next home game will be on June the 10th. They'll face the Iowa Barnstormers, the only team they beat earlier this season. That'll be at 7.05 at the BOK. You don't want to miss that one. That's June the 10th, first of two back-to-back -back home games. Sioux Falls comes here on the 17th. We'll have some guests from the Tulsa Oilers pro football team to talk football and give you some insight on uh, what this team's doing to get on the winning track here. Tulsa Ice Oilers, that's Oklahoma's, Oklahoma's oldest professional sports team, did they just announced their full 72-game schedule, already looking ahead to the 23-2024 season. By the way, it starts on the road in Utah, Saturday, October the 21st. The team's 72nd season and 10th in the Eastern Central Hockey League has its home opener, set for Saturday, October the 28th, and Sunday afternoon, the 29th, at the BOK Center, as the Oilers will host the Cincinnati Cyclones. Nationally, the big national sports, sports story over the Memorial Weekend had to be, of course, the greatest spectacle in racing, the 107th running of the Indianapolis 500. There were three red flag stops in the final 16 laps for Joseph Newgate, won a tight race restart, beating last year's champion from Sweden, Marcus Eriksson, to the finish line of bricks by 0.097 hundredths of a second. Newgate had been 0 for 11 in the 500, the race he wanted to win more than any other. The first American driver, by the way, to get to the winner's circle at Indy since 2016. By the way, Carr and Indianapolis Motor Speedway owner Roger Penske just continues his domination of the speedway. He won his 19th Borg Warner Trophy. Next, a preview of OU and OSU softball World Series games. The college baseball NCAA tournament will begin with the Earl Roberts, Arkansas, OU, and OSU all in action. Hear from some of the coaches, some of the key things coming up for our baseball and softball teams as they move into the postseason championships. All that coming up next on Oklahoma Sports Scene. 
You did it, Tulsa. You name the team. We name the team. You name the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday night, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. Billy Sims knows barbecue. How about nine meats, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs? Just to name a few and seven homestyle sides. We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Every day. Wherever you want. Online. Dine-in, curbside, or carry-out. We've had a passion for over 15 years of serving delicious barbecue to people like you. Billy Sims has fast, drop-in friendly neighborhood service. Loud enough for a tailgate and fancy enough for a wedding. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. Remington Park Racing returns with the 2023 Spring Quarter Horse Season running from March 9 to June 3rd. Million Dollar Races, multiple Saturday programs featuring the best horses in big money action and racing champions all competing throughout the season. The normal Remington Park Racing Week is Thursday through Sunday. First race at 6 p.m. nightly, Sunday afternoon racing, 4 p.m. The top quarter horse paint and Appaloosa racing season continues through June 3rd at Remington Park. This episode is sponsored by Equity Bank. Athletes work hard day in and day out to improve their game. They put in time and effort to stay in shape and bring their A game for the big day. Our tellers do the same thing with banking. We work hard to serve our communities and keep your money safe. Equity Bank, we never forget it's your money. Matty and back with us on Oklahoma Sports Scene here at the Billy Sims Barbecue Farm Shopping Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Women's College Softball National Championship World Series gets underway this week in Oklahoma City. The OU team, the number one seed, our Oklahoma State Cowgirls, the number five seed. Also this week, the start of the college baseball tournament leading to the World Series in Omaha, Nebraska at the end of the month. 64 teams in 16 regionals announced on Monday. We were, in fact, at the Oral Roberts Baseball Team's Watch Party to hear where they would play, and who they would play. Stillwater Regional in Oklahoma. Yeah! Ryan, congratulations. Your thought on the uh, Golden Eagles Regional. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, we're excited. Obviously, it's close to home. Uh, hopefully, our, our, our fan base will have an opportunity to travel. Uh, a couple of the teams we're very familiar with, so hopefully that adds a little bit of confidence to your team. So, looking forward to it. Excited. 30th trip to the regionals for Old Roberts. How good is this baseball team? How do you rank this team? Well, it's it's one of the most uh, balanced teams that we've ever had. Maybe the one one of the most consistent teams we've ever had. Uh, I think when you look what they've done uh, in the offensive uh, end of it, on the mound and defensively have extreme balance on the team and they've done it over a long period of time so very consistent down the stretch as well so we're excited for the opportunity kind of feel good about uh oklahoma state matchup you've done well with them this season yeah you know i don't know that that carries over a whole lot but hopefully that adds a little bit of uh of confidence to your team knowing you you've played a couple of the guys you're very familiar with a couple of the guys in there, or a couple of the teams in the regional already so hopefully that adds a little bit of confidence going into the weekend and the best news is it's a much shorter bus ride. Long bus rides here, right? <laughs> it's a much shorter bus ride than what we just came off of. That 15 hours on Saturday night uh, is going to be a little bit, a lot tougher than what we're going to do here at uh, the end of the week. Oh, Roberts University baseball team, boy, they are road warriors. They had a 15-hour road trip up to Fargo, North Dakota to win that Summer League Championship. And, of course, 15 hours back to Tulsa on Saturday night. Now, of course, after winning their 21st Summer League Championship, defeating South Dakota State 12-4, the Golden Eagles are ranked number 10 in the nation. They're 46 and 11, with college baseball's longest win streak at 17, including 2-0 versus Oklahoma State, home and home. Home and away, you should say. They play Friday at OSU, first game in the college regional, 7 p.m. on ESPN+. The Sooners, meanwhile, 31 and 26, surprised most by making the NCAA tournament. They're being sent to Charlottesville, Virginia, to play East Carolina. They'll be coming up on this Friday, on ESPN2 at 6 o'clock. And Arkansas, they're always in the NCAA 
tournament, it seems like. Number three overall seed, Razorbacks 41 and 16. They'll be hosting a regional again in Fayetteville. Open play against Santa Clara. They also play on Friday, 2 p.m. ESPN+. Well, the college softball World Series gets most of the attention around here, it seems, though, and rightly so. They started Thursday, June 1st at USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City. And once again, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are in the field. The defending two-time national champion Sooners ranked number one all season long, extended their national record win streak now to 48 games in a row. After that dramatic come from behind, eight to seven win over Clemson to clinch the Super Regionals, their 64th straight home field victory, and the last one played at their old stadium, opening a new stadium next year. Sooners coach Patty Gasso had one word to describe her team's final inning two-out comeback. We're never out of a game, no matter what. We could be down by five, four, whatever. We're not out of a game, and we believe that. We've done it a few times um, on this stage with so much at stake. Um, when the stakes are higher, can we do this? Yes, we can. I mean, they don't doubt it. And um, it's just something, I don't even know how to explain it, except you can feel it around you. And um, no one is caring about results. We talked about just outcomes. We're just caring about creating momentum because we lost it. We knew that, we lost it. Fans helped and uh, away we go. This is one of the biggest memories I'll walk away with without question. We left Marita Hines in good, good spirits here. Next season, the Oklahoma softball team moves to its new multi-million dollar field, Love Field in Norman. But before that, they've got some more work to do. They're going after a third consecutive national softball championship. All starts, of course, up there at the Women's College Softball World Series. They'll take on number nine, Stanford, Thursday afternoon, 1.30 on ESPN. The Oklahoma State Cowgirls are heading back for its fourth straight College World Series appearance. Ending the regular season, they had a tough time at the end of the regular season. Cowgirls had lost 11 of the last 13 games and had then a five-game win streak, though, turned things around. They swept through the regionals and the super regionals in Stillwater, beating Oregon 8-1 and 9-0. OSU coach Kenny Jayeski was still looking for answers. We were playing not to lose instead of playing like we played um, playing like we played the last two weekends, um, which is just attack and suffocate. And um, I, think we play, I think we played air free this so far, the postseason. Um, I don't know how many walks that we've had, the two things that we really talked through, but we go again here today, eight strikeouts, no walks. Um, and then our hitting truthfully has, has been really good. That was nasty. Um, really good the whole year. <coughs> um, we just went through a stretch where we weren't driving in runs. We were getting on base, we just weren't driving in, in, in runs, we weren't finishing. Um, and so um, you, the season brings that. It brings peaks and valleys and potholes, and we've been in all of it. We've been muddied up. Uh, it feels pretty good to be going to number four. So some great softball and baseball for area colleges coming up this week. Also next week, very special Tulsa Public Schools Athletics, two big events. They have a golf tournament at the amazing Southern Hills Golf Course for the Legends Foundation. That's on Monday, June the 5th. Then the 11th annual Tulsa Public Schools Athletics Hall of Fame will be staged on Thursday, banquet on June the 8th at the Warren Place Doubletree. We have two special guests to talk about both those events coming up right here on Oklahoma Sports Scene. That's straight ahead. Billy Sims knows barbecue. How about nine meats, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs? Just to name a few and seven homestyle sides. We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Every day. Wherever you want. Online, dine-in, curbside, or carry-out. We've had a passion for over 15 years of serving delicious barbecue to people like you. Billy Sims has fast, drop-in friendly neighborhood service. Loud enough for a tailgate and fancy enough for a wedding. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. You did it, Tulsa. You name the team. We name the team. You name the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday night, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. 
The Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, home of the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award, is a treasure trove of memorabilia honoring Oklahoma sports legends. For museum hours or to schedule a tour, go to oklahomasportshalloffame.org. Two very big events coming up for Tulsa Public Schools next week. One of the first is going to be on Monday. Kathy Brock is going to tell us all about that. She is the lady who's been heading up our Outstanding Legends Foundation. She is the president of that group there. And first of all, can us talk about the event itself? Monday, Southern Hills Country Club, sold out event. And just to get on Southern Hills Country Club is really special. Well, we started actually two years ago. We approached the board of directors, and they do one nonprofit a year. And we knew two years out we had to do this, and we were selected by them. Uh, we're right in the middle of the uh, city of Tulsa and the tax base for Tulsa Public Schools, and they were all in on what we do and what we provide for coaches and athletes there uh, within our system. So um, a week from today is our date, and wow. we've got a sold-out event. We've got 200 golfers, 25 foursomes in the morning and 25 in the afternoon, an 8.30 shotgun start and a 1.30 shotgun start in the afternoon. It's all started in 2019. Tell us what is the Tulsa Public Schools Legends Foundation? Well, bottom line is we help above and beyond what the budget can do. Uh, the budget has been uh, improving over the last three or four years. Dr. Gist has really bought into what athletics does for the students, uh, in especially our system. And so the foundation, we just raise money to help our athletes and coaches, uh, equipment needs. There's constantly uniform issues. Uh, we have a tutoring program that we use uh, to help our middle school athletes. We've got some programs that we want to bring back to Tulsa Public Schools that we had to lose over a period of time. But uh, we work on behalf of the coaches and kids. Uh, we're like a booster club on steroids for all of our yeah. nine high schools. Let's talk about it. the number of schools, number of students we're talking about in Tulsa. Well, 33,000 plus. Wow. We're almost 34,000 students in the Tulsa Public Schools. We're the largest school district in the state. And what has the response been to your Legends Foundation? Well, it's been great. Uh, the support that we've gotten this year on the golf tournament has superseded anything we've done in the past. We're usually at La Fortune Park, and we have a wonderful event every year. But for this event, we, uh, we did raise our fees to help yeah, offset sure. the costs with Southern Hills. But the community support with the corporations and foundations and individuals that have stepped up uh, they are super excited, and we are too, to be able to host this at Southern Hills. Legends Foundation certainly has a very clear mission and mandate. Well, we just uh, believe that whatever we can do to help these kids and help our coaches, you know, have the opportunity to compete out on the fields. And, uh, you know, we're competing against a lot of the private schools. We're competing against a lot of the larger schools. Uh, our coaches do above and beyond what you know their expectations are on a salary base, and we just—if you've read the Tulsa World and yeah. talked about uh, these 100,000 plus uh, coaching salaries That's from right, yeah. uh, other systems, yeah. our, we can't do that with our coaches. Yeah. But we're moving up there, and we're doing better. And with our foundation, we would like to set up an incentive program to keep those coaches around. So if the coach makes a district playoff or if the coach gets to a state championship, we're gonna to try to set up a program where we can allow for stipends for those coaches. And of course, athletics as we know, certainly Kathy, and I hope the public understand, it's an integral part of the education system. Absolutely, the life skills and the things that these kids will learn and pick up along the way, the behavior, patterns, the discipline that it takes to be an athlete, and uh, the camaraderie from the team sports is so special. And uh, a lot of these kids won't go on in college and play ball or uh, compete, but they will have learned something in the Tulsa Public Schools athletic system. And we're talking to an alum of the Tulsa Public Schools and, of course, the Tulsa Public Schools Athletics Hall of Famer, Kathy. What did the athletics in Tulsa, of course, you were start before the really, it was a really women's sports, sports, sports program. In uh, 1974, in January, uh, women were uh, approved to be able to compete in athletic events, non-contact sports, <laughs> but they had to compete on the men's team. 
So uh, I was a springboard diver and had been competing all my life uh, up until then. And I yeah. just uh, had the opportunity to dive on the men's team and it helped earn me, I think by the weekly competition, an opportunity to go to University of Illinois on a scholarship. You must be amazed at the growth, especially of our women's sports. Would you ever think we'd have women's wrestling? <laughs> I, no, that was one I did not uh, ever think was going to probably show up on the map, but it's been very uh, uh, successful, and uh, these girls are given the opportunities to do so many more things than uh, they were you know, back in the 70s when I was in school. So they, uh, we know that it's all sold out, of course, on Monday, Southern Hills Country Club. When's it get underway? And uh, the public, can they come watch the event? Or? Uh, they could. It's pretty much a private event because yes. it's a shotgun start. It's true, not, true, yeah. unfortunately, not, not like much. the Junior League used to have four tall uh, stuff. So, and it's well. not the PGA yeah. or the Senior PGA. <laughs> but uh, we're really excited and proud to be able to host this event at Southern Hills Country Club. And again, thank you so much, Kathy. Kathy Barkley, president of our Legends Foundation, Tulsa Public Schools. We'll learn more about the Tulsa Public Schools' other big event of the week, the Hall of Fame inductions with Gil Cloud, straight ahead. You did it, Tulsa. You named the team. We named the team. You named the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday nights, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. This episode is sponsored by Equity Bank. Athletes work hard day in and day out to improve their game. They put in time and effort to stay in shape and bring their A game for the big day. Our tellers do the same thing with banking. We work hard to serve our communities and keep your money safe. Equity Bank, we never forget it's your money. Hi, I'm the Big O, Jerry Ostrowski, former University of Tulsa football player as well as Buffalo Bill, and you're watching the Oklahoma sports scene right here. The Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, home of the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award, is a treasure trove of memorabilia honoring Oklahoma sports legends. For museum hours or to schedule a tour, go to oklahomasportshalloffame.org. Uh, now for the second big event of the week coming up for Tulsa Public Schools. It's their uh, 11th annual Tulsa Public Schools Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. It's going to be Thursday at 6.30 at the uh, Warren Place Doubletree Hotel, 5.30 reception. The guy who put it all together started right at the start. Gil Cloud, we call him Athletic Director Emeritus, 10 years leading the Tulsa Public Schools Athletic Departments. And Gil, great to have you back on your show. I'm the co-host here at <laughs> Thank Oklahoma you. Sports Scene. And uh, always a big event, the Hall of Fame. I know you take great pride in that event. The Hall of Fame, you know, it was really funny. When I went to Dr. Ballard, the late Dr. Ballard, right. uh, in uh, the summer, right after they had been named me full-time, I was on for about three months as an interim, and then they named me full-time. I said, no, it's amazing the number of people we've had come through these halls and these high schools, both athletes and coaches, yeah. that we haven't recognized. He said, what are you thinking? I said, I think we need to have a Hall of Fame. <laughs> and that was August. September, we had our first meeting, and we had the first induction in January. And people say, you, couldn't, you can't put it together that quick. Well, we had a great team, and we put it together, and of course, uh, the rest is history. You know, the, the, the number of people that have gone in now, and, and, and we still have uh, a plethora of people. That and that was a big thing, Gil kept saying, Gil. We don't have enough people to put in a Hall of Fame in the Tulsa Athletics. And it's, it's, oh my gosh, the wait list is incredible. We now. don't have enough room. And I know in the office they're running out of space yep. for the plaques. Uh, you know, That's right. But, but it is, it is uh, when you stop and think about the legacy uh, of a Wayman Tisdale or a Billy Tubbs oh, or an Eddie Sutton, yes. uh, yeah. John Starks, yeah. uh, Anthony Bowie. I mean, you, you look at all those people and you think, I've told people that these people are in our Hall of Fame. They said, all those people are in Tulsa? <laughs> they just can't believe it. Amazing. It's, uh, it's, and I think we're adding, we're adding to that now. We still have uh, youngsters that are coming through the program. Right. Sure. And that was one of the, the other catalysts, not only to recognize uh, our former student athletes, 
but I think in, in, in retrospect, to have the current student athletes look right. and see what could happen. Yeah. You could be a part of this. Uh, you know, I think uh, one of the comments I always made when I was in the college business, we used to have to have a meeting with all of our student athletes, beginning them every year, the NCA rule. And one of the last things that I always tell them, I say, you know, uh, while you're at this university, you're gonna take a lot of trips. But as far as I'm concerned, the most important trip you take is across the stage your senior oh, year. True, yeah. And that was it, because I know that a college graduate can send me more money than a college graduate. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, let's talk about this class. Class of 12 going in on Thursday. Uh, some names people recognize. We're going to put some names up on the screen here, too. But uh, some of your thoughts on some of these inductees and some great memories for you, I know. Well, I mean, you know, Melvin Gilliam, oh, uh, you know. Legendary. Uh, classic three-sport guy, unbelievable uh, two-sport at the, at the University Division I level, <laughs> which is unheard of yeah. today. Uh, that wouldn't happen today. Uh, you know, you, you, you talk about uh, uh, Ron Lancaster, iconic high school coach in the state. Yeah. Uh, all the, the great athletes he had. Uh, Weldon Tisdale of the Tisdale family. Sure, I yeah. mean, you know, great basketball acumen and BTW grad. We got Ira Willis. Ira Willis, uh, uh, interesting Webster graduate, uh, tremendous athlete in basketball and baseball. Has been an official for 40 years now. Uh, calling basketball yeah. and baseball and softball. Uh, wh what an in individual he is. Steve Turnbow. Probably uh, one of the most iconic advertising yeah, I executives. had no idea. He was a TPS grad Tulsa and an athlete. I know it. Tulsa no Hale idea. played yeah. baseball at Tulsa Hale. I remember playing, I played against him when I was a junior uh, at Rogers. He was a senior at, at, at Hale. Um, a name that some people won't recognize right off bat, some people will, uh, Philip Johnson, uh, 35 years uh, in the district. Uh, 30 as an athletic director at yeah, McLean, yeah. coached basketball at Rogers, uh, well deserved, really kept the, the McLean program together during a diff difficult time as it transitioned there. And of course, uh, the iconic uh, uh, cliche, uh, Barry Lewis. Thrill for Barry, well deserved. Yeah. Everything yeah. about anything in high school athletics. He's been covering for what, three, four decades, I guess it is? Right, four like decades, yeah. and, and really uh, now is uh, the editor for high school and college yeah. for the Tulsa world. Uh, but anytime we would have a question about has so and so done this or that, I'll call Barry. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's yeah. like, kind of like Google. Yeah, that's, that's right. What you call Barry. Well, I know, I suppose you did retire, but still you're very much involved hosting Inside Tulsa Athletics, of right. course. What is the state right now of TPS Athletics, Gil? You know, I think uh, it is uh, on the way back up. The pandemic was very difficult. Yeah. The pandemic uh, really was one of the key factors in my retirement. Uh, I felt good. I still feel good. Yep. Uh, but going through that two years of indecision every single day of, are we going to have enough players? Yeah. Are we going to have enough coaches? And uh, the numbers, the participation numbers obviously went down, but they went down for everybody. Yeah. Uh, across the state. Well, those numbers are back. As, as I interview coaches now on ITA, uh, one of the questions I always ask, well, how are your numbers? And they all, every one said, they're, my numbers are up. P Good. Kids are yeah, coming yeah. back to participation. And I think that's, in criti that's critical. The facilities are in great shape. Yeah. You know, through the bond issues, our taxpayers did such a great job in approving those and the vision uh, that Dr. Ballard had for the long term uh, of our facilities. They had not been touched for years. Wow. And uh, he made a, a statement, we're, we're going to get this done. Well, some of the challenges, I talked to high school coaches here, this uh, portal thing where college really hit high school athletics hard. Now, NIL is sl slipping into prep athletics. Too. NIL was <clears throat> approved by the OSSA in April. God, and uh, they did so basically the same reason I think that the NCA did it, so they wouldn't be sued. Yeah. That's the whole thing. They did, they were running from the law. Out of my hands. Uh, it you know Pat Jones and I have the same philosophy. It's the worst <laughs> thing that's ever happened. Yeah. To college athletics, uh, the portal is the second worst thing that's happened. Yeah. The kids now, uh, you don't have to stay and work it out. I can just leave. Yeah. I'm you gone. Know? And uh, and the coach has got to recruit the same kid over and over again. Well, he's recruiting the kid while he's on the on the squad after having recruited yeah. him to get him there. Gosh. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. It, it, it is. It's a shame. Uh, what's going to happen, I think, in the high school business, it's, it's going to be shaky for a little while. Uh, and then I think we have to get back to a, a point 
uh, when the uh, pandemic year goes away yeah. at, at the university level. You know, we got yeah. people going six, six years now. Wow. You know, playing. Uh, I think it's going to level out, and we'll go back to you. Got to move. You got to set out a year. All those kind of things. Well, be out there Thursday. One place, Double Tree Hotel. TPS Athletics Hall of Fame, the 11th class, all started with Gil Cloud here. <laughs> Coach, great to be with you. Thank you. We're going to put get one of your Hall of Famers on the show next. Rick Ingles, former TU punter. Outstanding. Straight ahead. Player. Good guy. You did it, Tulsa. You name the team. We name the team. You name the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday night, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. The Remington Park Casino is always open for jackpot gaming. The winning action never ends. Enjoy great food and drinks in the Bricktown Brewery, open daily at 11 a.m. Simulcast racing is offered every day, featuring North America's best tracks. Visit the Club Remington Desk for player card membership and begin earning points and rewards. The jackpots are always flowing. The next one could be yours at Remington Park. Billy Sims knows barbecue. How about nine meats, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs? Just to name a few and seven homestyle sides. We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Every day. Wherever you want. Online, dine-in, curbside, or carry-out. We've had a passion for over 15 years of serving delicious barbecue to people like you. Billy Sims has fast, drop-in friendly neighborhood service. Loud enough for a tailgate and fancy enough for a wedding. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. Well, you've heard all about the Tulsa Public Schools Athletics Hall of Fame, the big event coming up this Thursday at the Warren Double Tree Hotel. The 12 inducted in the class of 2023, including this young man right here. <laughs> Go back a few years together. Rick Ingalls, the latest Hall of Fame representing the University of Tulsa TPS Hall of Fame. Rick, good to have you on the show. And I said we go back. I used to do play-by-play -play back in the 70s for TU. Yep. And you were putting yep. for the Golden Hurricane. Yeah, I, I remember you running around the field, keeping an eye on all of us, Yeah, talking to us, keeping us lined out. And your first coach was? Uh, Hoot Gibson, Claude Hoot wow. Gibson. That goes back some years, doesn't it? Yeah. And then the F.A. Dry yeah. took over for him about midway through our freshman season. F.A. Dry, legendary coach. But of course, it also started for you back here in uh, Tulsa Public Schools. Correct. Yep. I went to Tulsa Central High School, stayed at Tulsa University. And quite frankly, I, I've talked to a lot of people. You know, they always want to go away from school. And yeah. I felt like I was away from school. I stayed in the athletic dorm, and if I wanted to go home, I could go home. If I didn't, I didn't have to. So it was, it was a pretty good deal. Well, let's talk about your development as a punter. Was that always your focus in uh, high school, or what were the sports there? Well, no, I actually thought that I could do more than just punt sure, or right. kick. Yeah. Um, but I busted my shoulder when I was in the ninth grade. I made a tackle on a kid named Sylvester Berry, who uh, would turn out to be my teammate at TU when we were in college. <laughs> And I busted my shoulder, and I had to have screws and pins put in my, put in my right shoulder to have it put back together, and that's what made me start focusing on punting. Rick Cross also was inducted the University of Tulsa's Hall of Fame, and well deserved because listen, listen he was in uh, uh, his TU career was selected by the Sporting News and Time Magazine as an All-American punter, 1975, a 46.5 yard punt average per ga per punt. That is a T record that stood, by the way, for 43 years. You're awful proud of that, Rick. You know, I, I keep thinking somebody's going to break it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess trying to, you know, keep it up for that long. I mean, it's just, it's hard to keep that kind of a punting average up over the course of a year with the weather and sure. everything. What are some of your favorite memories of your time at TU on the football field? Oh, wow. You know, my, honestly, my favorite memories are just the guys. Yeah. Uh, we had a, such a great group of people back then. You had Jeb Blunt, who was... Played, yeah, quarterback, you know, yeah. played quarterback, was drafted by the Oakland Raiders, obviously Steve Largent. Yeah. Um, Arthur Bennett, my roommate, you know, just a great guy. Uh, we, we just had so many good athletes back then. And just looking back on it, it's not so much about me as it was about my teammates and just being there. 1973 graduate of Tulsa's own downtown Central High School and a uh, much smaller group of high schools back then too. But uh, what was the level of play, though, at the Tulsa high schools in the early 70s? You know, 
Tulsa Central, we didn't already have that good a team. I mean, we might have been a 500 team at best. Yeah. Um, but there again, you know, we had a lot of good guys. I had great memories of, you know, playing with you know, the guys that were on our team, our coaches. Even though we didn't have a lot of success, you know, on the field, uh, we all got along, had a lot of fun. The biggest, the biggest thing was we didn't have a football field to practice at. We would have to, if the bus didn't show up to take us to the practice field, we would have to run the two miles to practice. And if it didn't show up to take us back, we had to run back. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, after the TU career, what, what happened after that in football? Well, I got drafted by the Seahawks yeah. and uh, played there and made, made the team. Same, same with Steve Largen? Steve Lar Largen actually got drafted by the Oilers. That's right. They and and then there. he right. he got released. Yeah. And uh, Seattle wound up picking him up, and we wound up playing our rookie years together and part of our second season. I got released during the second season, picked up by the Steelers, finished that season, and the next year they traded me to the Eagles. So I was able to get in three full years of play and just got just enough time in to get my pension. <laughs> Sounds good. What was the difference in the college and the pro game? It must have been really unbelievable. Uh, you know. I think the biggest difference was, you know, in, in, in pros, it's just, I think at this the level of play is just a little bit better. You know, I mean, it just gets better yeah, and better right. the higher you go. So it was a little faster, a little quicker, a little more intense. So what advice would you, a all-American punter, a NFL punter, give to some young football player who's thinking about, you know, I'd like to get into this game, I'd like to perfect my punting. Uh, what's the best way for them to perfect and learn more about the skill? You know, I spent an awful lot of time on my own, you know, kicking footballs. There, there, weren't, there weren't many days that I did not kick. Yeah. I, I was constantly, you know, going around. I had a bag that I had eight to ten footballs in and an air pump, and I found an open field. I was kicking. I, <laughs> I, I can't imagine how many hours I spent kicking a football, and I've often thought, what if I took that time and maybe put it towards education or so? <laughs> what, what else would I have done? <laughs> Well, you but about, you got to put a lot of time into it. Talk about that average, 46.5 yards, a uh, TU football record for punting. Uh, any punt really stand out to you? One the boomer you can remember for a big game? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I was, uh, we were playing, I was, with, I was with the Eagles, and it was preseason. And uh, they put me into punt just before the end of the first half. Wow. Uh, they were trying all the punters right, at yeah. the time. And I was seven yards deep in my own end zone. The center literally rolls the ball back to me. <laughs> so, I mean, my, my objective is to get, it, just get rid of it. Yeah. Well, I do, and it goes off the side of my foot probably 15, 20 yards. And <laughs> Dick Vermeule is in my – I mean, he is in my ear. I mean, oh. you, some of the things he was saying, <laughs> you punters. Yeah. Anyway, half ends, go into the locker room at halftime, and I'm trying to stay hidden. I want to stay outside. Yes. Well, he's standing right by the door as I walk out of the locker, and he looked at me, and he stuck his finger in my face and said, you got one more chance, Ingles. My next punt, I hit 57 yards. They <laughs> returned it 75 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> you did your job. You I did that, and he, and he right. said that. He said, at least you did your job. <laughs> well, I have some great memories, and it's going to be a very special night Thursday. And uh, what are your thoughts about going to the Tulsa Athletics Hall of Fame, TPS? Well, you know, I was, quite frankly, I'm very honored, but very humbled. Uh, obviously, I just recently got into the TU Hall of Fame, which right. I was ecstatic about yeah. that. And this is every bit as, as, as just as much meaning as going into the TU Hall of Fame, probably more. Uh, not many people from Tulsa Central go into Athletic Hall of Fame, so I'm, I'm very pleased about that. And again, Reg Ingalls will be inducted as part of the Group of 12 going into the Class of 2023. Tulsa Public Schools Athletics Hall of Fame. The banquet again is Thursday, June the 8th, 6.30, the 5.30 reception at the uh, Warren Place Doubletree Hotel, and I hope you can make it and be part of it and celebrate. We have a great time there, and uh, I get to MC the events. We always have All fun. Right. Good Those to are good see stories you again. together. Rick, again, thank you, buddy, and congratulations. Hey, congratulations to you, and you, you recently received a lot of Hall of Fame members yeah, yourself. See, that's because I'm really old. That's what yeah. happened. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Ingalls, good to have you with us here, Rick. We're going to come right back with a very special surprise guest to wrap things up for the week. Billy Sims knows barbecue. How about nine meats, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs? Just to name a few and seven homestyle sides. We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Every day. Wherever you want, online, dine-in, curbside, or carry-out. We've had a passion for over 15 years of serving delicious barbecue to people like you. Billy Sims has fast, drop-in friendly neighborhood service. Loud enough for a tailgate and fancy enough for a wedding. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. 
Hi, this is Spencer Tillman, Fox Sports, and you're watching the Oklahoma Sports Scene. You did it, Tulsa. You named the team. We named the team. You named the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday night, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. The Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, home of the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award, is a treasure trove of memorabilia honoring Oklahoma sports legends. For museum hours or to schedule a tour, go to OklahomaSportsHallOfFame.org. We have a special treat I think you're really going to enjoy on our kind of Memorial Week show. And let this special guest introduce himself with one word. Boomer! Here he is, the Boomer Man himself, Billy Sims, is with us at his place. Billy, thank you for hosting us for our oh, Oklahoma Sports Scene well, shows. No problem at all, Chris. This was where it all started for you with the barbecue business, right? 18 years ago. Wow. That's how long we've been at it, and I'm surprised we still did it. <laughs> and they should, in fact, I'm getting an update from Jeff Jackson, his big partner on this stuff. They're talking right. about, at one point, 54 locations in nine different states. COVID, I have summed that down a little bit, but still yep. amazing. Yep. Up in the well, old... actually, before, when COVID hit, we was at about 63 wow, yeah. stores. And then through mismanagement and a lot of different areas. Changing, sure. Uh, uh, I think we had about a little over 40. Well, I tell you, it's amazing, and uh, everybody talks about the quality of your food. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Barbecue here. Well, you you can have a, a old house in the backyard. If the food good, people gonna come to <laughs> That's it. That's right. Yeah. And I, my favorite show is the Heisman. That's a brilliant sandwich. Well, uh, I tell people about the Heisman. I say you just can't eat too many of them because you be doing them poles when you walk. <laughs> Have the pose well, with Billy you. Sims, of course, legendary University of Oklahoma football player. They're a 1970 Heisman Trophy winner, two-time All-American. And but Billy, for you, it all started back in. Well, actually, you're a baseball kid in St. Louis, Missouri. I, I, hey, I was. Hey, let me tell you, big Cardinal fan to this day. I'm yeah. 67 years old, and when I think of St. Louis, actually, I was just there. Uh, my mother had to go to the hospital, but she's okay. Oh, good. All the best, Mama. Right. And uh, most black kids, we didn't play football. We played baseball huh, because yeah. of the Cardinals. Okay, right. We were so sure. good all the time. Just lost a good friend, Mike Shannon, passed away. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Yeah, no. yeah, Mike passed away last week. Great guy. I love yeah. horse racing, too. I a lot okay. of time with Mike talking okay. about horse racing. Okay, I didn't racing. know you. That's a yeah. small world. I didn't know you know yeah. Mike. Oh, yeah. So how well, did you get into football? Yeah, that's when you shipped, they shipped you to Texas, right? Well, I wanted to go live with my grandparents. Right. And my other siblings, they didn't want none of that because <laughs> I like the cows and my go. grandparents yeah. grew, they grew everything they ate because my mother's from a family of 12. Yeah. So they worked the fields and did all that stuff. So I had asked my, my mom, could I go live with my grandparents? And uh, he said, is that what you want to do? I said, yeah. So I went down there and I didn't start playing football. And, Cause I'm still thinking baseball. Yeah, and, right, right. And uh, the coaches wanted me to come out and play football. I said, I ain't finna get hit playing football. <laughs> no tackling in baseball. No, no tackling in baseball. <laughs> Run my curve, yeah. you know, all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, so I finally, because of my relatives, I came out, started in the tenth grade, but I was third thing string running back and first string <laughs> linebacker because oh, I could run yeah, right. and tackle. Yeah. And I had I got more joy out of that <laughs> than the other. So well, Hooks High School, he's still a Texas high school football legend. Consecutive 100 yard games, 38. 38 straight 100 yard that, games. That hadn't been broke yet. I'm that, surprised. Still there. <laughs> 1972 to 74, Hooks, Texas. Uh, 516 points. He had 441 carries. Uh, 7,730. All these were Texas high school records for years and years and years. And then his life changed at Hooks, Texas when he was at a gas station and got a call from Barry Switzer. Well, 
Actually, uh, before that, I you know with the recruiting and everything, I was headed to Baylor. That's right. Coach Taft made a big impression. Oh, Grant on Taft, you. good Baptist, good That's Baptist, right. and we're right. Baptist. That's right. And my yeah. grandmother fell in love with Coach Taft. Yeah. I said, "Well, Grandma, I just go to Baylor." Yeah. That's the only reason I was going because we <laughs> were Baptists. <laughs> so. Hey, such a to your mama. Yeah. 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 I know Barry is a mama. So. Can't say no to Barry. You no. Know, so, my last visit was Norman. I wasn't even coming up to Norman. Yeah. And uh, I told my baseball coach, who I loved a lot, I said, i go just because of you. Yeah, oh, oh. And he was- he, Billy, don't let him fumble here. Sorry, Billy. Uh, it would be another broke, you know, but we got plenty. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> so I told him, I said, well, coach, my baseball coach, I said, i go up there for you. But I ain't going. i go see what's, you know, what's what. So I go up there. That weekend, oh, you had just won that championship, 74. That's right, yeah. And uh, they had all these Texas players on their team. And I said, well, coach, I think I'm going to go to Baylor. And uh, uh, he said, well, before you leave, I want you to visit my family. He's finna put this Sooner Magic on me. Yeah. I didn't know what Sooner <laughs> Magic was. Yeah. And uh, so I go to his house. And there's Becky and Doug and Craig. They all running out. They look kids. Yeah, man. right. Running out to meet the dad. And they all wanted number twenty. Your, your jersey number. My jersey number. <laughs> I'm like, wow. And Coach Swisser, he's putting this sooner magic on me. Yeah. But I didn't know what sooner magic was. <laughs> he said, uh, Oh yeah, they already selling your jersey number up here. Oh my God! What a salesman, huh? He is that indeed. <laughs> I got to mention that, uh, that famous phone call, and they're up, they're up playing Colorado, right? They up there You're playing the Colorado. Station, Hooks. Hooks. Yeah, cause Coach Hooks. I told him I'm gonna be at work. Hooks is real close to Idabel. Okay. So Cross the line, yeah. Cross the line. Little town outside of Texarkana. That's mm -hmm. where Hooks is. So. Uh, One of my coworkers said, hey, Billy, Coach Swisher want to talk to you. I don't think they put a joke on me, Chris. <laughs> I know he's at the game because I can hear get the game on the radio. Yeah. We're not that far from Oklahoma by right. Iowa Drive. So I run over there. I said, Coach, I know you got a game. What's, what's going on? He said, well, I didn't have anything to tell my players. And we was up pretty good. Put half a hundred on them already. Already, half a hundred. I didn't know what he meant by that <laughs> yeah. at the time. And he said, I was thinking about you. I'm thinking, oh, who man. does that? Who does that? What else that? can you go, huh? But who are you? <laughs> so I can hear the referee on the phone say, Coach, you got to get back on the field. <laughs> get ready to kick off. He said, No, Twenty, I'm going to promise you two things. If you recommit and come to this great state of Oklahoma and this great university, I'm saying to myself, Okay, here, here it comes. comes. He said, First of all, we'll make sure you drop. You, you graduate from college, because I know your grandmother would love that, and that's what she want. You pull the grandmother card on me. You can't say I no. Say, no. Can't say, I say, uh, yeah, coach. And he said, and two, you're going to win the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. Seriously, Craig. Seriously. Well, he right did there that. on the phone. 1970 Heisman <laughs> Trophy winner, two-time <laughs> All-American, 77, and most people think, including Coach Switzer, should have won the damn thing in 79. Well, maybe because of the way the votings and everything was lined yeah. up, uh, they all wasn't in because they still ain't in. They still have it the same <laughs> way. There's been several people who could have probably had a chance, you know, yeah. uh, winning it twice. But believe it or not, no one in the state of Oklahoma didn't know I was going to win it the first time because I hadn't done anything. I hadn't played well. Yeah, I, yeah. I missed my sophomore yeah, year. That's right. yeah. I got hurt. Yep. And I came back off the sophomore year, my junior year, and had a complete turnaround, rededicated myself. Matter of fact, even, even my roommate who blocked for me won the Outland Trophy that year, Greg Roberts. He had 1,896 yards his junior season when he won the Heisman Trophy there. And uh, uh, again, it's some great teammates, of course, and championships. And we still remember you, though, and the great battles with Nebraska. Oh, boy. boy. We have had some great battles with those guys. Yeah. Must respect goes to those guys because they were just as good as we were. And, 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 and those games, it always came down who would make the least mistakes. And they didn't have Sooner Magic, though. 
Well, no, they didn't have some of that. <laughs> I saw a lot of that up the Lincoln. I was there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know they didn't yeah. have some of that. Barry Sims was the very first draft pick of the 1980 National Football League draft, picked by the Detroit Lions. After his Heisman career with over 4,000 rushing yards and 52 touchdowns at OU, in the NFL, Sims went to three Pro Bowl games. He had over 5,000 rushing yards in his pro career, averaged 4.5 yards a carry. That, by the way, was one of the best averages in pro football. And he was the first NFL player to ever score three touchdowns in his very first NFL game. The incredible Billy Sims. Only one word to wrap it up. Boomer. Next, Remington Park race report from Trackside, Oklahoma City with Dale Day when we return on Oklahoma Sports Scene. This episode is sponsored by Equity Bank. Athletes work hard day in and day out to improve their game. They put in time and effort to stay in shape and bring their A game for the big day. Our tellers do the same thing with banking. We work hard to serve our communities and keep your money safe. Equity Bank. We never forget it's your money. You did it, Tulsa. You named the team. We named the team. You named the team. The Tulsa Oilers indoor football team kicks off in March, Saturday night, 7 p.m., BOK Center. Season tickets are on sale now. Go to TulsaOilersFootball.com. That's TulsaOilersFootball.com to get your season tickets now. Don't miss your chance to experience the fast pace, helmet hitting, pad popping excitement of professional indoor football. TulsaOilersFootball.com. TulsaOilersFootball.com. Billy Sims knows barbecue. How about nine meats, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs? Just to name a few and seven homestyle sides. We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Every day. Wherever you want. Online, dine-in, curbside, or carry-out. We've had a passion for over 15 years of serving delicious barbecue to people like you. Billy Sims has fast, drop-in friendly neighborhood service. Loud enough for a tailgate and fancy enough for a wedding. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. A very busy holiday weekend at Remington Park Racetrack. Four major stakes races on the track. And Dale Day was there to wrap it up for us on this Remington Race Report. The sports top Oklahoma Reds had a stakes night to themselves on Remington Park's penultimate weekend of the season. Here's a look at the top performances of that evening. Four consecutive races on Saturday night for Oklahoma Reds. First up, the FL Ladybug for two-year-old Oklahoma Red Phillies. Alley Cat Dynasty surged forward to get the victory. Won by Arrowhead Racing of Wapanucka, Oklahoma. Jesus Ruiz trains Roman Cruz with the winning ride. Three straight victories for Alley Cat Dynasty this season at Remington Park. Second was the one, Where's Camilla? Third, number eight, She Looks Political. And fourth, the 10, Countess Trace Sace. Three straight for Alley Cat Dynasty, winning the FL Ladybug Stakes. The Easy Jet Stakes was next up on Saturday, May 27. Just a redneck cowboy was one of two in the race, trained by Jason Olmstead, was the longer shot of the two, coming through with a big score and paying $26.80 for the win. Owned by Brenda Riswig of Bismarck, North Dakota, she's the leading owner right now at Remington Park. Ramiro Garcia with the winning ride in an upset. Second, the three, JT, I'm that boy. Third, number five, Follies Ray. Fourth, the ten, three separate sixes. The Jack Brooks Stakes was next, named after the legendary Hall of Fame trainer. Going 350 yards, three-year-old Oklahoma Breds, a field of nine. They're off for the Jack Brooks Stakes, clean start. Away sharply, Archie's Gold Wagon right there to the inside, trying to come on cool and foxy. Rock on, farther out, DeFore's running a big one, gaining ground as well, mighty like a rose, and Racy's Pilot. Final 150, it's Archie's Gold Wagon on top, Rock onto the inside, Archie's Gold Wagon and the Jack Brooks by a half length or more. RG's Gold Wagon came through and paid $13.40 for the win. Under Cordero and Ben, winning jockey Mauricio Garza, the winning owner from Mission, Texas, Stephen Jordan, winning trainer. Second was the 10 to Force, third the 1 Rock On, fourth the 2 Cool and Foxy. The legend himself, Jack Brooks, was on hand along with his wife Winona to pass off the winning trophies to the winners of the race named in his honor. Finally, the Boyd Morris Memorial was up for older Oklahoma Reds, three and older, going 400 yards. A talented field of seven. They're off of the Boyd Morris Memorial. Slow start for us. A view. Quick start. A political payoff. Came away sharply. Straight and true tonight. Chased now by pretty darn quick to the outside. One fabulous boy trying to gain. It's just a cool boy. A couple hundred yards to go. It's still on top. 
Able to pay off, giving way now to Pretty Darn Quick. Pretty Darn Quick, reaching down for more. Pretty Darn Quick will take the Boyd Morris by a half length. Upset pulled by Pretty Darn Quick, who paid $24.80 for the win. John and Nate Hamas, the owners of Holly, Colorado, John Hamas Trains, winning jockey Ramiro Garcia, his second stakes win of the night. Second was the one, a political payoff. Third, the four, just a cool boy. And fourth, number seven, one fabulous boy. Board Morris Memorial, named in honor of the jockey who won the All-American Futurity aboard Decetta. Board Morris was a longtime jockey and then turned into a great trainer of both quarter horses and thoroughbreds at Remington Park from day one until his passing in the early 2000s. The final weekend of the Remington Park season is Thursday and Friday, June 1st and 2nd at 6 p.m. with the Champions Night card on Saturday, June 3rd at 5 p.m. The final night of the season features more than $2.5 million in total purse money with a stakes-rich program led by the richest race in Oklahoma, the $1.2 million Heritage Place Futurity, and the $250,000 Debbie Schaaf Remington Park Championship. At Remington Park in Oklahoma City, I'm Dale Day. Now back to Sports Scene. Live racing continues at Remington Park. It's the last week of the season. Hard to believe. Getting ready to wrap up, so don't forget the post times. That's uh, coming up uh, this Thursday, Friday, Saturday at 6 p.m. Then Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, the final week of live quarter horse in Appaloosa and uh, paint racing at Remington Park Racetrack. Well, it's time now for our Equity Bank presents Lincoln's Two Cents Worth. And to honor our current and past military service members, a very special tribute for you. This Memorial Week just passed. It is called It Is the Soldier, written by Charles M. Province. I was introduced to this on a recent trip of holiday vacations in Channel 8, and Rose Heilman was our tour director for holiday vacations, and we stopped at a roadside memorial uh, monument. She asked all the veterans to get off the bus and go to the monument that represented their service, and then read this story. Really poignant. I think you'll enjoy it. It says a lot about what this past week of Memorial Day holiday has been all about. Again, it is called, It is the Soldier. It is the soldier, not the minister, who has given us the freedom of religion. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to protest. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to vote. And it is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath that flag, and whose coffin is draped in that flag, who allows the protester to burn that flag. It is the soldier. All of you who served in the military and are serving now, thank you for your service. Thank you for all you've done for this country. That's my Lincoln's Two Cents Worth, presented by Equity Bank. Until next week, here on Cox Yearview Channel 3 and YouTube Oklahoma Sports Scene on anywhere in the world. We want to look ahead to uh, next week's show. Coming up on the final jewel of the Triple Crown, the Belmont Stakes, we're going to have Andrew Warren back with us, owner of the thoroughbred racehorse Ray's Kane, who rode, raced in the Kentucky Derby. He's going to go back in the Belmont, the test of the champion, final jewel of the Triple Crown. And look forward to a very, very special guest on this uh, Belmont preview show coming up. Also, a special guest, the Tulsa Oilers uh, Indoor Pro Football Team. They've got two home games coming up uh, this month. And the Ice Oilers Hockey Team delve more into their schedule they just released and look at some of the things they're doing in the offseason with special ticket sales, things like that. Until then, also, I want to remind you that we'll also have Malcolm McCollum on to talk about Tulsa Tough, the big uh, bicycle road race uh, through the city of Tulsa. It's been so, so popular and getting a lot of attention nationally. Big show next week as we get ready to move to the first full week of June. Hope you'll join us then. And thanks for joining us. And again, hope you had a great Memorial Day week. This is Chris Lincoln saying, remember, always be a good sport.